We're back for another sale at WB and Sons in Newcastle, and every time we come up here, they never fail to impress with the wide variety and the eclectic mix of cars, bikes, camper vans, and all kinds of vehicles and memorabilia they have for you to bid on. The April sale is no different, and we're going to start a preview of this sale with a Porsche rear wheel drive, lightweight, manual gearbox made for enthusiasts. No, not that one, this one. What about this? A Porsche Standard Star Tractor. I love it. Brought over from Germany. It's been in a Porsche dealer in Leeds. Now up here, it's immaculate. Gorgeous, isn't it? We love a vintage tractor, but it was foreshadowing for the KN and the McCann diesel, because look, diesel powered <laughs> as well. It does have the high up driving position, Joe, so I it can It does, we like that. that. Rear wheel drive manual gearbox. Porsche enthusiasts pay a lot of money for this stuff. So actually, an estimate for this around 18,000 pounds, I think it's a bit of a bargain. But what if you want something a bit more agricultural, but with a roof? What about this? 1955 Land Rover Series 1. This now is this, gorgeous. Full nut and bolt resto oh, on this one. To give you some insight, the owner of this car, the vendor, is around 50 thousand pounds into it. Still cheaper than a new Defender, mind well, you. Well, quite right. It's said to be the best Series 1 on the market right now, and frankly, I couldn't disagree. It's stunning, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Vinyl seats are absolutely mint. Canvas soft top is lovely. The paint is gorgeous. The tires are actually fresh. This is absolutely stunning. I reckon best Series 1 landing on the market right Beautiful. now. Beautiful, absolutely, yeah. What if you want something practical but just a little bit faster, though? Oh, I like where you're going with that, Joe. Yeah, absolutely. Still four-wheel drive, mind. 2005 Audi S4. Avant. Avid. You were, you were rather like, taken by yeah. this, weren't you? Yes, V8 engine, fast performance wagon that's got all the practicality and yet sports car performance. This one. Sensible guide price on this one as well. Lovely spec, the blue with the sort of creamy leather interior, Recaro's. A little bit of imperfections in the paint, but nothing that will stop you driving it and enjoying it. And it wears its miles. It's got 125, 130,000 miles and it wears it incredibly well. Stick no. a bit in, go on. No, abs it. absolutely, yeah. Have it. Sticking to the more utilitarian theme, Joe, I just want to point out this. Austin pickup. Yes. Now, for those of you that are about to say, oh, it's a Morris Minor pickup. No, it's not, because there was never any such thing as a Morris Minor pickup. They never pickup, called it the fact. Morris Minor pickup. It was always, always the Morris six or eight cubic weight pickup. And then they, from 1958, I believe, it became, you could also buy it as an Austin pickup so that the Austin dealerships could sell the replacement to the A35, effectively. But this one, lovely example, nice and original. The paint looks to be largely as was. It's made of a few touch-ups over the years, but it's not too perfect or too polished. And with no sign writing on it, it's ready to brand up for any business. So yep. Classics World sticker down the side, camera rig in the back. I love it. I think that's absolutely perfect, yeah. Then we're going to walk through here. We've got some nice British curiosities here. But first, our friends at Lancaster Insurance are running monthly giveaways. You can win all sorts, from experience days to tools, restaurant vouchers and tech. So click the link below at the end of the video to enter their latest competition. Sunbeam Alpine Series 3 here. What a gorgeous thing. Absolutely lovely, isn't it? Really, really nice. Really lovely, tidy condition inside. I Paintwork looks fine. What strikes me about this, this is a really underrated left field choice. And because of that, they're a bit of a bargain. Yeah. I mean, the estimate on this, you'd get a middling MGB for this money. And this is a really nice example. And it's something totally different. If people see this at Classic Car Meet, they'll point it out because it's unusual. Sticking with the Roots theme, we've got this 1964 Singer Gazelle here. What a beauty, isn't it? The, the headline figure for this, 37,000 miles only, sir. Yeah. It's just lovely, isn't it? Again, beautiful inside, Absolutely. really nice example. It's not immaculate, the paint on the roof, there's a few little speckles and so on, but you know what, I wouldn't touch it because yeah, it's Yeah, we've, we've said this through. before, isn't it? that sort of honest patina just means you, would, you wouldn't be too precious about it, you'd still take no. it out. And the Audax Minx platform is still a lovely, lovely thing to use today. This is the top spec model. It's a really nice spec, the grey with the red leather. Yep. No, I, I love it. Another 60s saloon favourite next door, Vauxhall HA Viva. Yes, absolutely. The last uh, solely Vauxhall engineered car before they started doing all the collaborations with Opel. The Chevette and so on. Yeah, yep. lovely thing. And if you fancy another white family favourite, what about the Renault 16? Now, this one is a really a superb example. TX, so the top of the range model, absolutely spectacular. Those chairs inside. Oh, like sofas, aren't they? Oh, it's just, you just sit in there and just park up. It'd be brilliant, just so comfortable. The thing that struck me about this, so this is a TX, top of the range model, and there's one of only 10 left in the UK. Yes, this is a left-hand drive on, so it's not an original UK car, but there's only nine other 16 TXs in the country. You get electric windows, you get a five-speed gearbox, mid-70s, that's properly advanced stuff. If you fancy a bit of the comfort and a Bit of the Gallic charm of a Citroen DS, but without quite the quirkiness in terms of technology, this is a great shout. And actually, you wouldn't get much of a DS for this money. A pioneering it. hatchback before they even define the phrase hatchback, I would say. So um... absolutely, no, big fan of this. What if you want to see something more modern, more sporty? Totally different, in fact. Go on. We both love a BMW Z3, don't we? Yes, uh, I, 
I, I sort of forgotten basically how good these are for a start. Most how, people do. How underappreciated they are. Mm. But this lovely post facelift 2.2 six cylinder model. Unusual engine. Absolute gem of a car, this one, and it's a really good condition, 89,000 miles. Tidy example, it's a facelift with the wide body on it, which is more desirable, and yep. it wears its miles so well. There's not even any wear on the steering wheel or the gear knob. It's yep. just lovely. It's got the windbreak, the roof's in good condition, it's got the tonneau cover for it as well, so yeah. that's it's a ready to go for a summer's motoring. As I keep saying, the go-to car is an MX-5, and you wouldn't get much of an MX-5 for this money anymore. Yeah, these are still sensibly priced, aren't so, they? So honestly, buy these while they're cheap. They will not be this good for this that's, cheap. That's good longer. advice, good advice, right? What about another 90 Sports? car over there though. Oh, Let's I can see what you're have going. a little wonder, shall we? How's this for a forgotten 90 sports car gem? 1995 Opel Calibra. Yes, now it's an Opel one because it's a Japanese import, but of course it is effectively a Vauxhall Calibra and a fantastic example of that. So clean, it's done 37,000 miles, 16 valve, two litre automatic, plenty brisk enough. We've just driven this for an upcoming twin test with a Ford Pro so good. also in the sale. It's as tight as a drum, this thing. It's in beautiful condition inside and out. You can tell it's been owned by an enthusiast, oh, right? It's properly just, so. This, this is the car you want to buy. And the fact it's only been in the country for a year or so means it's not got any rot on it. It is immaculately yep. clean. And yep. for the price it's out, I think that's a great bit of bargain retro. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Use it every day, love it. These are only gonna go one way in value. Must mention this Astra GTE, but I know there's another performance hot hatch that you really... Yeah, can we... You would sell body organs for this one. Oh, Here I would, are. I'm already looking. Behold, 1993 Lancia Delta Integrale Evo. Just... Oh. Absolutely stunning, isn't it? This one has undergone some recent restoration work. It's worth every penny of its 80 to 100,000 pound estimate in my eyes. It's wow. just unbelievable, isn't it? Right. I love that it's not the typical red with tan interior that you see on Delta Integrales, the gray with lighter gray interior, which isn't perfect, a little bit of wear on there, but who cares? Just sit in those seats and drive it. It just looks fabulous, I have to say. It's, it's stunning. Dream car territory for Absolutely, you. Absolutely, sir. Please, if you buy this, let me have a go. Yes, yeah. I'm in awe of it. Well, let me let me drag you back something a little bit more down to earth. Still, still hot hatching. Hatch. Yeah, Mark II Golf GTI, sir. Great, eight, eight valve model. Really sensible guide price on these because yeah. these the prices of these just go up and up. Quite high mileage, but these golfs wear that six figure mileage with ease. One hundred thirty one thousand on this, but you know what? I reckon looking at it, you'd guess at about half that. Two door, which is unusual. Yep. Small bumper, yep. also quite unusual. Yeah, lovely. It looks like it's been lowered a little bit, but not ridiculously so. Love those BBS mesh wheels. The interior, incredibly nice golf ball gear knob. It's really nice, actually. Yeah. And I, like you say, that estimate, I think, is fantastically reasonable. It's still the car I regret selling out of the things I've ever owned. Could be your last chance into an 80s hot hatch for reasonable money. Yeah. Honestly, I think this is a great, great car, no. especially for the money. If you fancy something a little bit more unusual, though, let me give you properly unusual. I think this could be my car of the sale, you know, Joe. 1971 Ford Taunus 20M. No, nope, me neither. This is what the Cortina was in Europe before the Mark III Cortina kind of made it more universal with the Mark III, obviously. This one was imported from South Africa last year. It's been in the country for about six months, which means there's no rot on this thing. Three litre SX V6 oh, under the hood. Sounds glorious, goes pretty well. What a spec. Gold with the brown leather interior. It's a total unknown in this country. This could be the only one over here, but just look at it. It's, Gorgeous. it's, it's that fabulous sort of butch Americana styling, but the proportions are fabulous. I think you'd make a real statement on a UK show field with this. What price exclusivity? Quite reasonably, as it turns out. Well, I just I just think it's stunning. Yeah, for me, car of the show. But if you want a more modern, iconic Ford, bit of your bag here, I reckon. Yes, this is just rolled in, so we don't have a huge amount to tell you yet, but Mark 1 Focus RS. This was the car that kind of defined Ford's modern hot hatch era that we're in today. And this one is standard. Yeah. Not modified in any way, not lowered as Ford intended. 212 horsepower, all through the front wheels. Proper modern classic icon. It was a classic in its own lifetime, really. I think this really demonstrated how good the Mark 1 Focus was that they could get it to this level of yeah. engineering excellence. So, uh, right. yeah. If you, if you like Ford switch gear and you like performance, <laughs> but you like something <laughs> even faster. I see where you're going. Yeah. What about this, ladies and gentlemen, to round off another one that's just rolled in. 2010 Aston Martin Rapide, which is effectively a DB9 that's just a bit longer. So you're like this as a family, man. You've got back doors. Put the kids back in Back doors, cup holders, they'd be delighted in the back of that. Proper lap of luxury and actually, given this was 140 grand brand new, I think what you pay for this now is very reasonable. Really pretty prestige car for sure. And really indicative of the kind of variety that WB continue to offer. Yeah, I really must give a shout out. There's a K10 Micra in the sale that's not in the hall, but yeah. that's, that's going to be good. There's a Ford Scorpio 24 valve estate model. Love that, yeah. That just I mean, looks... You can see just over here the massive variety of bikes as well. I mean, there's a lovely Triumph Bonneville there. There's an RD350 Suzuki 
expand it. I could spend all day on the bikes alone. And the variety of cars, there's a really late Rover Mini, there's all the hot hatches you've seen, couple of BMW E30s, there's luxury, there's 60s British, there's a TVR Cerbera that's just turned up. We can't fit it all in a video. Go and look on the WB website and see all the stuff you can And better still, on. if you don't want to go on the website and you live near the northeast, come up and have a look yourself. This is the great thing. Everything here is on site, so you can have a little mooch around yourself. They've got their Sunday club on the Sunday, the 16th of April, so the weekend before. Come down and have a look yourself, and you can actually peer under the bonnet and take a closer look. Everything you see here, you can bid on in person, over the phone, by proxy, and if you do, let us know what you're gonna buy. But as ever, happy bidding, and thanks for watching. This video is proudly sponsored by Lancaster Insurance. Give them a call on 01480 400 889 for an insurance quote on your classic car. And don't forget to click the link below to enter their latest competition.